Hi, my name is Robin Wong and I want to share five more tips on using Olympus OMD cameras. In one of my recent videos, I've shared five tips on using Olympus OMD cameras. If you have not seen that video, I'll put the link up here. Please check it out. I will not repeat any of the tips. And here in this video, I'll share five more additional tips. Let's get right into it. Tip number one, the magic OK button. The OK button is a useful shortcut in many shooting scenarios. When shooting in various exposure modes, shutter priority, program, or aperture priority, we can adjust the exposure compensation as you stray too far. All we have to do is just press and hold the OK button. And when we do that, we can bring back the exposure compensation to zero. This works both ways. Either we plus or minus the exposure compensation to either extremes. And when we press and hold the OK button, we bring it back directly to zero. A lot of people didn't know this trick. When we move around the focusing point, as the AF target area moves further away from the center, the quickest way to move it back to the center is by pressing and holding down the OK button. And by doing that, we bring the focusing point right back to the center. A lot of people didn't know this trick, and they will keep pressing the buttons or swiping on the screen to have the focusing point right back to the center. Whichever works for you. Also, when we activate the highlight and shadow control by adjusting the curves separately, we can tone down the highlights and increase the shadows and control the mid-tones. And when we stray too far from the original line in the curve, we can bring everything back to the straight line. You guess it right, press and hold the OK button. Everything goes straight again. I think we are starting to see a pattern here. Similarly for when we use the color creator mode, we can adjust the colors, we can change the saturation as we move further and further away from the neutral color. Press and hold the OK button and we go back to the default setting. Tip number two, you can break the shutter speed limit of your camera by using silent shutter. Typically, every camera will have a mechanical shutter speed limit and for higher end OMD models, the limit is one over 8,000th of a second. And to break this limit, all you have to do is go to electronic shutter or enable silent shutter. You can do that from the super control panel, changing the drive mode to silent where there's a heart shape there. By enabling this, now you can break the 1 over 8,000th second limit and you can go to as fast as 1 over 32,000 and that is two stops more advantage. I find this to be very helpful when I use very bright aperture lenses, especially the f1.2 Pro lens when I shoot under bright sunlight to avoid overexposure. And yet I can maintain the f1.2 shallow depth of field effect. Tip number three, enable one-to-one -one preview during image playback. Typically, when we review an image after taking it, we will have to scroll a few times to get into one-to-one -one or 100% view, and we don't even know which one is 100% viewed. To enable an instant preview to 100%, go to the menu under the cogs, go to D2, and we will find the review default setting. Under that, go to equally value. This will enable instant one-to-one -one playback. Now, bear in mind that if you shoot RAW, your preview of 100% or one-to-one -one is actually five times. This is because the camera uses a smaller preview JPEG and it is only five times to show you a 100% preview. However, this changes when you use full JPEG and by using the full size JPEG, the camera will give you a true 100% view, which is equivalent to seven times. And this is also true if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG.
Tip number four, if you are shooting with continuous autofocus, CAF, make sure that you use low sequential burst shooting and avoid using high sequential burst. The continuous autofocus only works with low sequential shooting. The main reason why Olympus cameras receive negative reviews when it comes to continuous autofocus and also autofocus tracking was because a lot of these large review sites, some of them the reputable sites, they actually adopted high sequential burst when they tested the continuous autofocus performance of Olympus cameras. Here is the truth. When it comes to continuous autofocus, if you enable high sequential bursts on any Olympus cameras from past and present, it does not work. You will have to select the low sequential burst to allow the continuous autofocus to effectively work. When we select continuous autofocus mode, and that's CAF, now it is very crucial to enable that the burst sequential mode, if we choose to use that, it's actually in low sequential burst. That's actually 10 frames per second for mechanical and about 18 frames per second for electronic. By enabling this, the camera will fully utilize the continuous autofocus and we will get good results. However, if we somehow enable high burst sequential, either it's mechanical at about 15 frames per second or electronic shutter which is at about 60 frames per second the camera will not engage continuous autofocus and only single autofocus which means only the first frame we will get the autofocus and the rest of the frames there is no autofocus performed Now this is also true for Pro Capture modes. If you want to use, to use continuous autofocus, use Pro Capture Low. And if you want to use single autofocus, then you may go to much higher, which is Pro Capture High. Continuous autofocus will continue to work with Pro Capture Low. Tip number five, use smaller autofocus target area. To enable the small F target area from the F selection screen here, all you have to do is use the front dial and turn it around until you find the smallest autofocus area. You will have to cycle through different larger groups of autofocus points and finally you'll come to the smallest one. Use this as this will give you a much more precise autofocus. Okay, here is a bonus tip. Now, the camera has this auto EVF and LCD screen switch, which is very annoying. As you put your finger around it, it just randomly switches off. And we do put our finger near the EVF a lot. Now, to disable it, you can either dive deep into the menu to find the EVF auto switch, or there is a shortcut which is out here. Now look at this button up here. All you have to do is press and hold it and you will enable an EVF auto switch shortcut. Now when you have turned this off, you no longer have the annoying auto switch when you place your finger or hand near the EVF. But bear in mind that you have to manually turn it on and off, switching between the LCD screen and EVF and the EVF auto switch no longer works. That's all the tips I have to share in this video. I hope you have found these tips useful. If you have other tips and tricks to share, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to this channel. And I hope to see you again in the next one. Remember to go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.